At the dawn of the video arcade, Atari ruled with an iron fist. There were several reasons why that was the case. Not only were their games simple and fun to play, but they were also very addictive. But they also had the ability to get their games that you were playing in the arcades and bring them home on the Atari 2600. Now, there were several games that were produced that utilized arcade sticks, and those stick games would basically translate home pretty easily because the Atari 2600 controls. But not every game made a good translation, and one of those games was Centipede, because Centipede used something called a trackball. Now folks, there's many versions of Centipede out there, and there are a few that actually worked at home very well, but the folks at New Wave Toys and Replicate Amusements have created something that's pretty remarkable. This is a miniaturized version of the original Centipede cabinet that they sent into us, and this here actually does run Centipede pretty close to the original, even though it's pretty small. Let's take a closer look. We've seen multiple miniature versions of arcade cabinets in the past, like really tiny ones or ones that are maybe just a little bit smaller than the originals. But when it comes to remaking something like Centipede, that's not an easy task. See, for most folks out there that are making MAME systems or anything like that, typically what they would use is an arcade joystick and maybe a couple of buttons. But when it comes to playing Centipede properly, you gotta use a trackball. So when Replicate Amusements reached out to us to say that they had a brand new miniaturized arcade system of the classic Centipede game, I was pretty hesitant. Because to be able to take a trackball and to make it small, well, that's something that you shouldn't be able to do very easily. But folks, that's exactly what they did. What you're looking at here is a 12 inch 1 6 scale of an original centipede machine and almost every detail you would imagine from the original is replicated here. It's got the exact same design and the exact same form factor with many of the original artwork assets being reproduced here just on a much smaller scale. You got a light up marquee, you've got artwork that goes around the border of the screen and the sides of the arcade cabinet have really high quality reproductions of the original artwork you would have found on that original machine. But what makes this even more interesting is the fact that pretty much everything you're looking at here is one to one essentially the same. And I know that kind of sounds insane, like they wouldn't be able to reproduce every single asset, but believe it or not, they really did. Now, of course, there are a number of changes between this and a real arcade cabinet. One, you're not actually getting a CRT screen because let's face it, to get those nowadays is pretty difficult and to get one this small would be pretty incredible. You also don't have a functional coin door here. Although this is die cast metal and it does have functional buttons, you can't insert coins. Though this machine does come with really tiny miniature coins, I tried putting them in the machine and it just didn't work. Also, where the original arcade cabinet didn't run off batteries, this one does, and it has a rechargeable battery inside that is charged through USB micro. But aside from those few changes and the fact that it is a much smaller arcade system, it really does look exactly like a centipede machine, even to the smaller details that most other folks would have missed. So the fact that they were able to do that is impressive in itself, but how does it control and how does it play? Well, let's take a much closer look. The screen on this cabinet is a 3.5 inch vertically oriented screen. Now remember, on the original arcade system that would have been a CRT screen, so what you're getting here is, believe it or not, a much higher resolution screen, just a lot smaller. Now what they've done here is they've kind of mimicked the exact same resolution that you would have found on the original game, so from my eye, I couldn't see any kind of pixel shimmering or any kind of distortion in the image, which is very important. When you're playing this and you're looking at it, you're basically going to be fooled into thinking you're looking at the original game being played. That's incredibly impressive considering its format. But you gotta keep in mind that Centipede is a very visually simplistic game. So if it was a far more complex game, there likely may have been some kind of visual artifacts that we could see, but due to the way this is designed, this screen is perfectly utilized for this game. The version of Centipede that you're playing on here is the arcade ROM being faithfully represented on this cabinet. You get a really consistent frame rate and the visuals are essentially one-to-one. -one. one of the most accurate reproductions I've ever seen of Centipede was was on the Atari Vault collection that was released on Steam. That version of the game is really well made and this feels essentially the same. So it's really cool to see that experience in a smaller handheld format. But there is one visual difference that you'll notice with this game that you won't find in the original. And that is the battery identifier at the top that kind of shows up when the battery's about to die. Once you see that, it might pull you out of the experience just a little bit, but I'd rather know that the battery's gonna die than just suddenly have it happen while I'm playing. In the options menu, there's a couple of things that you can change to better your experience while you're playing. You can adjust the backlight on the screen or the sensitivity of the trackball, and you can also turn the marquee light on and off. 
All of these things are great, but I kind of hope to see a few more options like scan lines and stuff like that. And even though they're not there, the game is still pretty functional just as it is. On the top of the cabinet, you'll find a power button and a volume dial, and they work about as well as you'd expect. On the front of the cabinet, you'll find two coin return buttons that light up while the system's on. The left one will insert a digital coin so that you can play the game, and the right button will access the main menu and features. It's really simple to access the menu by just pushing that button, but it's getting around in there through the navigation that I found very difficult. It uses a complex set of button commands to kind of move everything around and to set things the way you want them to be set. If this was easier, I wouldn't have brought it up, but even though you don't use it a lot once you have everything set the way you want to be set, just doing it that one time was pretty frustrating, so that's something you might want to keep in mind if you're considering and getting one of these. But folks, I had to save the very best for last because this right here is the reason I think everyone should be playing one of these. The controls on here, even though they're small, even though they're microscopic by comparison to the original arcade controls are so accurate, it blew my mind. I can't stress this enough, this shouldn't be as good as it is. To the far left, you'll find the first player and second player buttons. Now these are clicky and they light up, but there's really nothing important about them because you don't really use them that much while you're playing the game. However, the controls to the far right of that, this is where things get really crazy. Now first, you've got a tiny little arcade button. It's not very clicky, and while you're playing Centipede, all you need to do is hold it down and it will keep shooting. And you would probably assume by the size of it that it just doesn't work very well, but it does. It's responsive, and when you have it pushed down, it will work every single time. But it's the trackball that really impressed me. Now, you can adjust the sensitivity in the options menu, which is very important if you want to get something that's a little bit faster or a little bit slower. Now, personally, I set the sensitivity all the way to the top. Now, this is just a marble or something, so it doesn't have a lot of weight to it. But what it does have is precision. This is just the way that you need to be playing Centipede. A lot of folks out there may be playing Centipede on some system using their mouse, or maybe they're using a joystick, but that's wrong. You need a trackball to play Centipede, and using this thing is the closest I've ever felt to playing Centipede at home in any form factor that was this size. With a joystick, you don't get the same fluidity that you get while moving your character around the bottom portion of the screen. When you have a trackball, it's much easier to dodge things and to aim properly where you need to be aiming. When you use a mouse, sometimes it does work, but I've always found the sensitivity isn't just exactly right. This is something I've noticed in the Atari Vault version of the game that I've played on PC. And if you were to use something like, let's say, a touchscreen, well, your finger takes up a lot of real estate so you can't see what's going on down at the lower portion and you might accidentally get hit sometimes. This miniaturized trackball, and in fact, all of the controls get you a really close approximation of what the arcade experience was like with the original arcade machine. There's definitely a lot going into the emulation of this to make sure that the game runs as close to the original as it can. It even retains its high scores, which is a very important feature for arcade games. And the entire construction of it is mostly comprised of metal and wood and some plastic components, but very close to what the original was. But none of that really matters if they didn't get the controls right. And because they did, that is the most impressive aspect of this arcade system. But of course, there's just one suggestion I have, even though they got this so close, I would have just hoped that they would have included some other trackball based games as well, because I really feel that that's something that gamers would have really appreciated. This can be a little bit of an expensive system, but there really isn't that many out there. This itself is a limited run, and for folks to go out there and spend the money that they want to get for this thing, it would have been nice to see a couple of additional games thrown on. And well, maybe that's just okay for some folks, and for me, I still think this is worth it for what it is, but I know that there's going to be people out there that would have liked more games than just what's offered. If you're a big fan of old school arcade machines, especially Centipede, I think this is something you simply must get. It's so good at recreating the original experience that it will completely surpass your expectations. And I know from personal experience that there's a lot of gamers out there that grew up playing Centipede on the Atari 2600. And look, if that's the version that you played and you enjoyed it, that's great. But what you get in arcades is a far better version, one that I think a lot of folks are going to enjoy. The Atari 2600 one is just a lot more blocky and not very smooth, but what you get in the arcade systems is an experience that is worth trying out. And nowadays, it's not very common to walk down to your local pizza place or laundromat and find a real centipede arcade cabinet. So for many, this may be the only way they get to feel that original arcade experience. Because if you've only ever played centipede with a joystick, well folks, you've never really played centipede.
As you can probably tell, I'm pretty happy with how this device turned out. It basically is the exact experience I wanted it to be with a couple of extra features that I wasn't expecting. But regardless, this is Centipede, the same Centipede you played in arcades being brought home. And for that alone, it's a very impressive feat. I really don't care how much this thing costs because as long as it's got that trackball, in my mind, it's totally worth it.